Hello, Oscillator Sync here. The Noodler is maybe a difficult device to classify. It's not a traditional sequencer, but it certainly does sequence things. To call it an arpeggiator would be to undersell it significantly, but arpeggios are very much an intrinsic part of its DNA. It is obviously far away from a traditional MIDI controller, but it offers hands-on control over MIDI instruments. So I think that it's maybe better to think about the Noodler in terms of how it influences your relationship with your instruments. When you use a keyboard controller, you are playing the role of performer. When using a sequencer, your job is more that of composer with the sequencer than in charge of the actual performance. With the Noodler, you're more acting like a band leader during a jam. You set up a musical environment with rules, and as the performance happens, you direct the flow of the music with broad strokes. The details are left up to the performers jamming away inside the noodler. This blurring of the line between composer and performer really speaks to my interest in generative music. In generative music, your role as composer is to set up a musical environment where you're balancing chance elements or randomness with a set of rules and parameters that govern the facets of the music, such as note choice, rhythms, timbre, and so on. Then, as performer, your job is to listen and react, guiding the flow of the music by adjusting those parameters and locking in rules that create something special. You're there to be surprised and embrace the unexpected. So in this video I want to start with a blank slate and explore how Noodler's unique combination of features can be used to create generative music. I don't intend for this to be a full demo of the complete feature set, Loop Hopper is a predictably great video on that topic, I'll link to that in the video description. Nor am I trying to imply that this is the only way to use the Noodler, rather I want to demonstrate a particular workflow and try to highlight some of the features that I find really cool for this musical context. So get comfortable dim the lights, grab a drink and a snack, it's time to noodler and chill. Okay, let's start by talking about what the setup looks like. So obviously in the center of the setup, we have the noodler itself. The noodler has two um, MIDI outputs, but for simplicity's sake, um, I'm just taking one of the outputs and it's going into zoom in a Kenton through five which is a midi splitter and it's from there that everything is hooked up so in terms of the stuff that i've got laid out to do the sounds uh we've got the mini brute 2s which is going to be doing the drone sound which will sound something like that when it happens lovely nice and droney uh that's running through the lovely Korg NTS-1 new tech. So uh, the effects on that are coming from the NTS-1 and that's also going to be making its own sounds, something like, like that. Isn't it crazy that 99 bucks gets you a synth and an effects unit that good? Lovely. Uh, the swinging over here, yes, there is the Korg monologue. Been a while since I've got it out, but that is going to be doing our other motif sound, which will sound like this. And that's going through, focus, uh, the zoom um, multi stomp over there. Nice, nice, nice. And then finally, working in tandem with each other, we have the Minilog and the Micro Freak uh, working together. The Micro Freak is actually rooted through the Minilog's external input, so it's um, a really basic patch on the Micro Freak, and the Minilog's doing all of like the envelope type stuff, and that's going to be giving us our pad sound. And the effects in that case are coming via the uh, focus, the uh, TC Electronics um, Flashback 2 and the Digitech Polara. And then panning around over here, we have a pretty good beer, a very good scotch, and the brush that I use to uh, get the dust off my synths. Okay, so let's start by talking about um, some of the stuff that we need to set up. 
uh, to get this all to work. So if we go into the menu and go into the first system menu here, uh, we've got our MIDI um, channel set up. So in this case, uh, for my drone motif uh, and motif one and motif two, they're just on one, two, and three, which is what the various synths are set to. So in the case of the pad, I've got this set to MIDI channel 10. Now my mini log is set to MIDI channel 10, but my micro freak is set to MIDI channel 11. And the reason for that is that if you come into menu th uh, three here, uh, we've got polychain turned on, which means that for the pad sounds, uh, each note is going to be spread between, in this case, channels 10, then 11, then 10, then 11, then 10, then 11, which essentially gives me eight notes polyphony across the two synths, which is really, really cool. So it allows us to do great big spread chords. If that's what we want to do, we won't always be doing that. There's also a nice interplay between the two different synths that I think is is nice as well. Uh, anything else that's worth talking about in the system menus for the way that I've set this up? Um, I will come back to humanize, but I've got humanize set to 10. Right, so let's come out of our menus uh, just for a moment. So the next thing I want to do is define the tempo key and mode. So uh, if we click on this knob here, uh, we have access to those three settings, tempo key and mode. Each time you click the knob, you'll see that this arrow here is switching and that tells you which of the three items here you're adjusting with that knob. Uh, now we're gonna make some very, very slow ambient. Now I'm not gonna go all the way down. This goes all the way down to like 10 BPM, which is really slow. Uh, I'm not gonna go all the way down at the moment just because it will help us hear what's going on. I will slow it down for the performance. Um, but yeah, we'll go for 30 BPM, which is still really slow. Um, but I'm into slow music at the moment. Uh, going down to the key, uh, you'll see the key uh, is being selected as I turn this around. Uh, I'm just gonna A. Let's try A today. Uh, and then the one that's kind of really important uh, for the feel is is the mode. So. We have major at the start there. If we're going to be nice and um, uh, optimistic with our sound, uh, but we have various different modes, all the ones you would expect. You can see it changing up at the top here, uh, including when we get to the end, things like whole tone, and then literally just um, uh, the tonic and then intervals, which is quite interesting. Uh, today, because I want to feel optimistic, and there's nothing more optimistic than a major scale we're just going to stick with major for the moment so the goal here is for me to set up a musical environment which is unpredictable and surprising in some ways but that is predictable in other ways so that there are things that are happening which always sound musical but those things that are happening are unpredictable and surprising for my money, the place where that magic happens if you like is in the motifs so these twinkly friends here, lovely. So taken sort of simplistically, the motifs are kind of arpeggiators, but they are more interesting than that actually. And to think of them just as arpeggiators is for this kind of performance kind of missing the point. So our motifs are made up of two things, are made up of the pattern and the rhythm. Uh, the pattern are the notes that are being played and the rhythm is the rhythm in which those notes are being played. Now what's really interesting about the motifs is the fact that our pattern and our rhythm are independent of each other and can be sort of tweaked independently of one another. And that allows us to do some really interesting things in terms of uh, creating overlapping patterns. So let's start by heading over to one of our motifs here. So um, just touching one of the motif knobs there. So we're in motif one at the moment. Uh, so let me just start, start going, we'll just talk about the, the general parameters here. So the first parameter uh, on this knob with the thingy pointing up there is the position of the motif. So how high or low it is basically. So we've turned it down, so now it's a lower arpeggiator. Uh, the next one here is the pattern length. Can 
you now that our pattern is made up of seven notes rather than the eight notes it was before. Nice, so on this knob, uh, when it's pointing up, we have different um, uh, ways that the pattern has been played. So you can see the shape up at the top here changing, so now it's a descending pattern, an ascending pattern, ascending and descending. Just go back to ascending for the moment. And finally, we can choose different patterns altogether. And by changing the patterns and the pattern lengths and the way that they've been played, we can get interesting relationships happening. Uh, but we can deep dive into those uh, attributes and that's where I think a lot of the power uh, is really held. So if I go shift to menu, now I have the extended menu. So basically what's on these um, uh, sort of call outs, if you like here. So down this side, I could get access to the chord sequencer and the MIDI controller. Uh, but up here, we're uh, um, in the pattern editor. Okay, so uh, inside the pattern editor, let's uh, start uh, taking a look at what we can uh, tweak. So the way that this interface works is a little bit tricky to get hang of when you first see it, but once you've done it a couple of times, I think it's really easy. So one, two, three, four values here. One, two, three, four knobs here. And same thing down the left-hand side as well. So what I'm gonna start by doing is setting the length of my pattern. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for a prime number. I'm gonna go, let's go for 11. Uh, so now if I play this back, We have this ascending thing happening here. So what we can do by turning this knob is choose which of the steps you can see I'm cycling through there. I'm going to edit. And from this point, I can edit uh, their value. Now, if we go all the way back past the first one here, we can choose what type of pattern we're dealing with, whether it's based on the chord, based on the scale that we're in, or based uh, just chromatic. Now, from this performance, I'm gonna stick with the chord. That means that as I change the chords around the noodler, um, the pattern is going to move with it. If I was on uh, scale, then the notes would not uh, move with the chord, but they would all fall within uh, the scale that we're currently in, which is uh, A, E major, I think, if I remember. Uh, and then we have chromatic, which is chromatic. Each note is just a chromatic note, which for this is not necessarily what I want. I'm going to stick with chord trans, and to be with them, I'm just kind of going to set it going and kind of feel it out a little bit. Um, so as you can see, this is just incrementing the uh, just straight up, which is what we're hearing. But we can come in here and start doing more interesting jumps, perhaps. ones there. Let's get rid of these repeating ones here as well. Which is pleasant enough. We might come back and tweak that, but yeah, I think that's nice. So where things get really interesting now is if we head into the Rhythm Editor. So you can see here in the Rhythm Editor, you can see that we have the steps cycling around here. And we have similar controls as we did on the, uh, the Pattern Editor. We can change the length, for example. Now I'm going to change the length. Uh, what do we have this one set to? 
11. Uh, let's go for another prime number. Prime numbers always work well for this kind of thing. Let's go to 13. Now, at the moment, every single one of these steps is exactly the same, so it just doesn't really sound like the rhythm has any impact whatsoever. But what we can start to do here is adding ties and rests. So again, I'm just gonna add some of these Now each time it's going round, the notes that are getting picked out and how they're being played is starting to be a little bit more interesting and less predictable. One thing we can do here as well is change the deep division here. And slow things down by half, which I think sounds nice. Okay, so let's um, come out of here for a second. And switch over to the other motif. And set it going. And we'll do the same thing. So uh, back into the pattern editor, uh, we'll pick uh, another prime number for our length. What's the next one along? 17, isn't it? No, we can't go up that high, can we? So let's go down to 7 instead. And same thing as before, we can start to program our steps. And we start getting these beautiful things happening. We haven't even touched the rhythm at yet. And I'm already in paradise. This one's going in reverse. Um, Cause we could go for a uh, up and down one. In which case, six, seven. Okay, so we'll go into our rhythm editor. See already on this one that we have rests scattered around. Uh, let's set the length. I think in this case we can go up higher. Yeah, let's go to 17. And let's make this a little bit less uh, stop, start, stop, start. At the moment we're setting everything either to rest or on full, but we'll get to why I'm doing that in a second. I'll add some ties maybe on this one. Is it, actually, is it worth for this patch? No, I don't think it is. And we'll drop that. That's nice, isn't it? Very easy just to get lost in. But at the moment, despite the fact that we have these interesting overlapping figures happening, uh, there's still an element of predictability to it in terms of the rhythm is always on where it is, the note choice is always exactly the same. 
So let's have a think about how we can make that even more interesting, shall we? So let's take a brief foray into another area of the new love settings. I'm going to hit the menu key here. So into the standard menus, not the shift menus. And I'm going to go up to this knob here, which is our LFO configuration. Mm -mm -mm. So you can see here that we have three LFOs. There are actually more than three LFOs. It's just that these are the three that we're able to configure. And similar interface here, four elements down here four elements down here. So you can see here that we have um, three LFOs. We can choose their shape and their um, period, how long it takes them to go around. So on oscillator, I don't know why I've chosen three first. I'm going to switch it over to a random sample and hold, if you like, type affair. And I'm going to define its length in terms of beats. Uh, and I'm going to go with five beats. Yeah, why not five? That just feels right. Uh, LFO two, let's set that to a, oh, back over here. Just have a sine wave, perhaps. Let's triangle, let's go sine, and let's just make this one really slow. Slow as it'll go, which is 40 seconds. I'm gonna go 39. Uh, because it's less of a round number and that feels more random, I guess. And this last LFO here, uh, we're going to have another one that is going to just loop around a little bit faster. We might tweak these values as we go on. So let's start one of our motifs again and have a quick drink. Delicious. So when we're in the menu like this, uh, these four knobs down here allow us access to the mod matrix. And this is where the magic happens. Oh yes, indeed. So um, let's think about our um, motif as it's happening here. What would be good to happen to it to make it more or rather less predictable, more uh, uh, more surprising to us. So one thing I think would be really, really lovely is if the position of the motif was shifting around. So we weren't always getting exactly the same note choices. They were always related in the same way, but it would be shifting as it goes. So uh, let's choose our very slowest sine wave, one that we just set up there. And uh, what I will do, so here we have, um, in terms of the control here, we've got this knob here is what the, uh, the mod source is. This one here is the mod amount, which we'll get to in a second. This one here is what it's modulating. And this one here is the destination value, which is um, allows us to center the LFO, if you like. So I'm going to whiz across here to motif one position. So this is going to be moving where our motif is currently centered. And if I start turning up the mod mount, you'll see here that the mod range has been represented here. And you can already hear that we're getting notes that we weren't getting before, including very high ones. and some much lower ones. Which means if we bring in the other motif now, the interplay between them becomes more complex and surprising. And wonderful. Beautiful. Uh, so let's pull a similar trick with our other motif as well. So mod source, let's take our slightly uh, faster one, our triangle here, so this one, and we will set this to motif 
to position. And we maybe won't stretch this one out quite as much. Since it's moving faster, but we'll turn up our mod amount. So you can see here, as I've turned up the mod amount, because this is unipolar, uh, it's only going up. So six to eight is going to take us too high. And we can just use this knob here to adjust that back down so that it's centered back where it was. Awesome. Okay, so um, the note choice is now becoming more interesting. That's lovely. Let's think about our rhythm a little bit. So we'll come into our next mod matrix. There are eight mod slots altogether, which is awesome. Um, so I'm going to choose our random source now. And for the destination, I'm going to choose the clock division. So that was what we turned down to make it go slower. So what I want to do now is turn up the amount here. So now our mod range is one to three, which means it's going to go half as slow some of the time and uh, twice as fast sometimes. And that's going to be chosen every five beats randomly. And because it's a random source, it's not always going to be changing it. Uh, so now mod motif one occasionally is going to speed up, go slower. So that rhythmic interplay between our two motifs becomes again more interesting. So we could do a similar thing with uh, our second motif as well. So if we uh, this time choose, so we've got some, um, some straight up hard coded mod slots as well. So we've got a 40 second long uh, triangle here, which sounds good to me. Uh, it's going to be predictable because it's a triangle, but with everything else going on at this stage, you know, we won't notice it so much. So again, motif to clock division. We'll up that mod amount. And we'll... You can hear that it already went faster there. We happened to hit on it there. And I want one to three again. Lovely. Okay, so let's come out of the menu here and let's um, just head back in to uh, here. This one, sorry. Uh, so on this knob here, we have the accent rhythm and offset. Now what I'm particularly interested in here is the uh, accent. So at the moment it's set to rhythm vel. So that means that it's the velocity that I've set in the uh, rhythm, which as I was doing it was the full each time. But I want to make this uh, random as well. And that was why, if you remember earlier, I said uh, in here that I have human eyes set to 10. Uh, and I said, don't worry about it, we'll come back to that. Here I am coming back to it, uh, and we're going to turn this so it says uh, human velocity. And that means now that the uh, humanize function, which is basically a randomizer function, is going to be taking care of our motif's velocity. And we'll do that for the other one as well. So now we're having... Um, variations in the loudness, if you like, of those motifs as well. Lovely.
So one of the other really amazing things that you can do in the mod matrix on the Noodler is you can actually have control over your synth sounds, if you like, by way of MIDI CC messages, uh, which is pretty awesome. So um, if we head into the mod matrix here and go into, okay, we're in five and six here, so that's a spare slot here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to be looking at MIDI CC message 16. Uh, 16, overshot. Come on, encoder. Um, and I'm going to aim it at the NTS one, which is on MIDI channel uh, two. On I just said it to all, can't we? Actually, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, so this is going to affect the attack on the envelope of. That's uh, on MIDI channel. To, yep. Uh, so if we set the shape in here now, look, we're getting those violin swells sometimes, and then other times we should be getting. Wait for it. Something a little less violent, swelly. So lower this a bit more. Actually, rather than using uh, a bipolar one, let's use a unipolar one. Then that's just going to go from zero up. So the sine wave on the mod matrix is always bipolar, so it starts in the middle and goes outwards. Uh, whereas the triangle wave is always unipolar, so it starts at the bottom and goes up. So here we go, we have some plucky sounds. And then we should get some violin spells as we go up. There we go. So now we have some generative things happening, even uh, within our synths that can't usually do this. So the, there's no way to modulate the attack rate on the NTS one other than turning the knob off, obviously. Uh, but now we're doing it. So we're getting variation in the in the timbre as well as in the uh, patterns that are happening. So we can bring in the other one. Lovely. Okay, let's um let's think about our pattern then. There's a pad there. So uh, pad is on these two knobs here. So what have we got control over? So we have control over its position. Much in the same way as we did with our uh, motifs. So. And obviously these are going to follow chords there. So this next parameter is strum, which will alter how the notes are played in, whether they're sort of spaced out as they get played in. So if we change that to a different strum pattern, you can hear there we've got a bit more of a staggered start. It's not so obvious with a paddy pad sound like this, but is happening. On this knob here we have uh, range and spread, so range is pretty easy to understand. Turn range down, we get fewer notes, so we get a more concentrated chord there. Down to just two notes. 
all the way up to eight in this case. Spread changes how the notes are picked. Um, I think probably one of these two spread modes are the most interesting or useful musically. Uh, and basically they give different emphasis to the um, upper and lower notes. So if we move the position now. When we're down at the bottom there you can hear that the notes are more sparse. So even though we've got eight notes chosen here, we're only getting two or three, so it doesn't get quite as clouded. And up at the top, more dense, clustered chords. It's also a random mode, which will randomly choose which notes within the range to actually play in, in terms of um, how many of them, whether or not they get played at all. So that's pretty interesting as well. And because we're into randomness, perhaps we'll stick with that spread. Now, I don't intend to necessarily be playing in the different chords in terms of changing what's been played too much during the performance. So again, we're going to head to our mod matrix to get our pad moving around. So into our menu, come down to this bottom slot here and we'll look at a lot of the stuff that we were doing before. So let's go pad position. Let's choose one of our slowly undulating LFOs here and start to apply an amount. Much of a range. Perhaps we want to just set it lower in general. And the other thing we'll do, I think, is uh, take a look at uh, the range. So, how many notes have been played in? Again, we'll choose a nice slow something. So we can just bring in the drone. And let's maybe drop it down. Maybe we can modulate that between those two positions there. So back into our mod matrix, uh, spare slot here. And 
to our own position. Let's go for one of the randomizer ones there. Uh, we want it. Set our tempo. Slower. And now we're free to bring in parts as we please and tweak our synths. So anyway, thank you for joining me on this long meandering exploration of how we can make generative ambient soundscapes centered around the noodler. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you're still here at the end, then well, well done. <laughs> and uh, please do give the video a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel because there'll be lots more in, in terms of exploring synths and ambient soundscapes, I'm sure. Lots of ambient soundscapes, very soothing in these uh, slightly more interesting times. Sometimes I like to just set these up and have a sit and have a listen and not bother recording anything. soon. Take care. Bye-bye.